welcome back. This is part two of a two-part video. The first part of the video, we actually created and made this album to include this flap over the front. What we're going to do in this video is we are actually going to lay the pieces that are going to be covering uh, the hinges and the spine here. So, and we're going to put it on our pages. What I have done is I cut a piece that measured here at six inches by seven and seven eighths. I don't want it to be eight inches because then you've got edge of raw paper here and I don't want to do that. I don't, I want it to stay encompassed within the album. So this is measuring in at seven and seven eighths. So it will just sneak right up to the edge. Now, what I also did is I went in and I scored where these gusset marks are. So on mine, I have a score line at one and three quarters and at two inches, and then again at four inches and four and a quarter. So then I folded over to make the gussets uh, very, uh, pronounced and I'm going to line these right up and I'm going to tape them in and then before I tape this flap and this flap down I'm going to gently push this card stock into this crease that we have started here. This will also be the one that our pages will be attached to. Now I will say that I did wrap this in 100 pound card stock it is really stiff, and what I've built up in here is considerable. I typically try to, to do a 65 pound cardstock when I'm building and wrapping an album, but I didn't have any. So I went ahead and went with the 100 pound cardstock. Um, I have been flexing my hinges and moving them around a little bit so that they will be encouraged to, con to work the way that I want them to. And I did end up with, and I mentioned this in the first video, end up with a little bit of a tear here. I'm not worried about this tear here because it's gonna get sealed. And if I just keep encouraging the gussets to, hold on, I just dropped my bone folder. If I encourage the, uh, the these pages to, or these flaps to turn over, um, then it will help break the, the bind. Just a minute. I had to get my bone folder. <laughs> Sorry. It will help break up the, the, the fiber, if you will. Now, I, I do want to kind of encourage this to not sneak around to the front. And remember, I told you, if you get a little bit of tear, just put a glue on it. That will help uh, to bind those pages. Uh, fibers on that pe pieces of paper back together again. And I am going to be uh, running a tad bit of glue on these when I put them in there so it will adhere to the Tyvek that we have. Um, seeing how I've got this one in my hand, let's go ahead and do this one. This one I measured in at right at five inches just a hair under, so five inches, and it was um, scored. I got I got this turned around, so I, it scores at one and a quarter and one and a half, and then this is the big one where we have to have three eighths of an inch, so that scores in at three and seven eighths. Oh, excuse me, three and three eighths and three and uh, three quarters. So three and three eighths and three and three quarters would be this uh, gusset score. I am going to kind of do a dry fit here, make sure that I'm kind of even top and bottom on the paper itself. Um, now you notice I've got a different tone going on here. I ran out of this paper. This is going to get covered, so I'm not real worried about it. It should not show after I get done with it. 
Um, and I'm going to be using the same for the pages, but again, we're going to be wrapping those with signatures, so the color will not be that uh, pronounced. I am going to start with putting tape on the inside, this piece here. I'm going to cut that off. <clears throat> And I'm going to run it right on that gusset. I should still be in frame here, but I need to see as well. And I'm going to turn it around, and then I'm going to, I'm just going to, I've had to do these twice, so I want to make sure that I'm there. Okay. wanted to make sure that I was on the right score line. Okay, there is my quarter inch gusset fill. And then I'm going to do it on the other side, which is going to be the 3 eighths. Right along that score line. Now I want to get ready to put this down in there. I want to make sure that I've got enough tape on here um, so that it will stay in there securely. And before I lose it and I get myself confused, I'm going to put a quarter inch strip of tape right in there. And then again out here. And then a quarter inch strip in here. Now I'll be doing that to the other piece as well. So if you're a fast mover and you're done, you know what you're doing, go ahead and move on to that second piece but I am going to burnish and then the only tape that I'm going to remove is a single strip in the middle because I want to be able to place this and make sure it's in before I put the rest pull the rest of the tape so I want to fold this so I'm looking at it kind of like this. So these are my gussets right here. And then I'm going to put this right in between both of these outer gusset lines. And where I scored it here, I should be lining up fairly well with the gussets just under, oh, I got it on backwards. Whew. Boy, I'm glad I did not burnish that down. I would not have been a real happy camper if I had done that. Okay. Boy, that's not sticking for some reason. So let's take, I don't know why that is. So let's take a second strip of tape off and let's try this again. I'm, I'm folding the gussets in so I can line it up with this chipboard edge. And my gusset, I don't know if you can see that real well, but here's my score marks, and here's the end of my gussets that are showing right here. So this shows to me that I've got these in there at the right angle. So now I'm gonna sneak under here, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull the rest of this tape. Not 
All right. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and push this in there right along the edge of that chipboard. And as you notice, as I'm pushing this in there, this is lifting and that's okay. That means I'm getting this in there. And then I'm going to carefully, I don't want this to pull up out of the gusset. So I'm gonna carefully take that tape off. And then I'm just gonna kinda of lay it over and gently put it down. And then I'm gonna pull this back and grab this tape. I'm gonna put this in. So there's my gusset. And using 65 pound cardstock uh, for wrapping and for framing this is a lot easier to work with than um, 100 pound, but that's all I had. So uh, the inside is at least getting wrapped, uh, placed with 65 pounds. So now I'm gonna carefully lift this and I want to push down if you I don't know if you could see it if you slow-mo the video but when I pushed down this sat back in the gusset now I'm just gonna very gently I don't want to pull it up out of there until I get that secured with the tape then I'm gonna take this off oops it tore Try it from this angle. There we go. And then I'm gonna take this off. What am I doing wrong today? Here we go. Shouldn't be that big of a struggle, for goodness sakes. Okay. And then the center, and there we are. Okay, turns very nicely. I have some tape overhang down here, and I am just gonna kind of push that in under the lap. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to this one. Same process. I'm going to lay the tape right along the score line. paper overhang. Get that out of the way. Now I'm going to come along this gusset line. I want to turn it and then I'm going to come along this gusset line. This is the piece that your pages will mount to, and then it's your signatures will mount onto the pages. Now, the pages, I want 100 pound cardstock, but unfortunately, I don't have any. I am completely out, so I am using um, 
the 65 pound weight that I have because I'd like to finish this album with you. And I'll just have to remember that I am personally playing with 65 pound weight. I really would encourage you to use 100 pound weight. And the reason for that is, is it adds a level of stiffness to the album so that it's not getting all wonky on you. Um, it will keep things nice and firm and rigid and it helps the book to present straight and not uh, lopsided because you're going to be putting some weight on the inside of this. So you want to make sure that the paper that you're using is going to be I'm going to take off another one because the last one didn't. Okay, so I'm going to fold these in on themselves. And again, I'm going to space this right in between uh, the chipboard edges between the two. And then I'm going to take off the other tape. Now, why do I do it this way? Well, because if I misplace it or mislay it, I've got less tape that I have to worry about and I'm not wasting my undo to get it off. So I piecemeal things in down the road a ways. It saves me a lot of headache. Let's see if I can't trim this. I should have done it before. Oh, I'll just I'll just roll it under. I'm not gonna. Okay. Now, just like I did before, I'm gonna gently push in, and I'm apply pressure to this other piece of uh, chipboard, the edge, and then I'm gonna come over here. And I'm gonna do the same. And I'm just gonna encourage that paper, break its fiber a little bit, encourage that paper to lay down in that gusset. Now I'm gonna come in here and take this piece off first, just like I did the last time. Okay, push it down. And then I'm gonna take these two off. Well, that's okay, it's gonna get hidden. Now I'm gonna do the same over here. Both sides, both edges of the chipboard. Encouraging that to stay down. I'm gonna take this off. And I'm gonna roll that excess underneath there. You've got, I've got my nice gussets so that this folds nice and easy. Now let's put our pages in. Now these pages are going to mount right here to this piece. There are going to be two pages. Not very many, just two. It's probably enough for now. 
And if you'll notice, it's probably easier if I show it this way. When I put this down, I've got a 5 8 inch gusset here that I've created. When I fold this over, let me get it back in here. This is going, it's just like a waterfall. This is going to butt right up behind that fold and then you're going to place it down. And if I get this in here evenly, there is approximately five eighths of an inch here that will match the five eighths of an inch here so that everything is kind of symmetrical. Now, the pages, when I cut them, what I do is I've seen albums where they didn't anticipate for this folding over and then their pages ended up out here. Um, so what I do is I take with my gusset folded, I will come in here, butt it up to where I want it to be, and then I fold this over and this here, this edge right here is the end of my album. I do not want my signatures, once they're on the papers, I don't want the signatures coming into the end of the album. So I'm gonna cut it about 3 8 of an inch short and then my buildups will stop right here at the end of this piece of paper. So when this folds over, then I'm not gonna have any of that stuff falling out. And so then this is gonna be able to come up and wrap around comfortably. All right, so I cut my pieces. This is seven and seven eighths, top to bottom, because I don't need to have it flush with the top. But this piece ends up measuring in at eight and three eighths. And then you're gonna score it at five eighths. You're gonna do two of them. So if you wanna go ahead and get cut, get that cut, or if you've, you're fast and Nimble, you can stop the video and then do it. I'm gonna fold this down away from me. That's the side I wanna put the tape on. Give it a good burnish. Now, I'm gonna pay attention to this edge right here. I don't want this piece to go beyond that. So it, when I get done, it's gonna be lined up this way, but upside down, so go this way. It's gonna look like this when it's folded over when I'm done, all right? Now, turn this flat back over. Now, this is always the tricky part, is getting this on here, level. I'm, I'm eyeballing top to bottom, make sure I have um, approximately the same spacing. I just wanna gently lay this down, make sure that it's gonna lay flat, and I need to lift that a little bit. Okay. Now my next page. They're just big waterfalls. Uh, and the way that they, they go into the album. You just have to be mindful of your overall length. Okay, now I'm gonna butt right up to this line and I'm gonna try and match it up top to bottom so that it's equal. Where is it? There it is. I don't have good light on my side so it's hard to see. And then as I'm laying this down, I want these to lay down evenly. I don't want them off. And if they are off a little bit, I'm gonna fold into the seam. Okay, so we have a 
five eighths here, a five eighths here, and we have a little bit more than five eighths here. I could have cut it a little bit more, but then it would, to me, it just seems like the spine gets really skinny. So that is, now I'm not gonna cover this. I'm not gonna cover this. It's a waste of cardstock because you're gonna put pattern paper over this anyway. So I am not gonna worry about that. This is done. This is your album. And I will be using this album style in an upcoming uh, video tutorial on a paper collection that I got from uh, Scrap and Create. So I will be doing this. And if you have any questions, please reach out either by email or message me below. And thank you for hanging in there. Bye-bye.